This is Marrero, Louisiana, on the west bank of the Mississippi River, and after the days of Native American tribes like the Chittimacha and the Choctaw, the area was populated by fishermen, farmers, and outlaws escaping the law. But first go to patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread to get more exclusive videos on Louisiana content like the one you're about to watch. The town of Marrero is named after a guy named Louis H. Marrero. He was born in Mississippi, but his lineage goes back to the Canary Islands, which makes him part of the Islanos community. His family arrived in the New World in 1778, and his father, Bastien, became a cotton planter and moved to St. Bernard Parish. While he was at Centenary College in Jackson, Louisiana, the Civil War started. At about 15 years old, Marrero joined the Confederacy and was wounded in the Battle of Murfreesboro. He was eventually captured at Chattanooga, then brought to Richmond. Now, Marrero was held there until May of 1865, and he would walk all the way back to Louisiana upon his release. During Louis Marrero's walk back to Louisiana, though, a Boston businessman named Oakes Ames purchased the land on the present site of the town of Marrero. But Ames would name it Amesville, after himself, of course. Upon his return, Louis Marrero joined the political arena and was appointed a member of the police jury of Jefferson Parish and was soon made president of the board. He would have several distinctions over the course of his political career, including getting on the board of commissioners for the Lafouche Basin Levy District, the postmaster of Amesville, state senator, all that. In 1896, he became the sheriff of Jefferson Parish and was easily the most powerful person on the West Bank by 1910. Louis Marrero was the sheriff of Jefferson Parish for 20 years, and in February of 1916, the U.S. Postmaster officially changed the name of the Amesville Post Office, thus solidifying the name of the town of Marrero. All of this is fine and dandy, but perhaps his most famous feat was when he went head-to-head -head with the infamous Louisiana spirit known as the Axeman. New Orleans was a main port for Italian immigration after the Civil War. Now, in fact, New Orleans had more Italian immigrants than New York and New Jersey. Racial tension was also rampant as well. Italian Americans were kept out of New Orleans' most exclusive social clubs, even as recently as the 1990s, to be honest. This would lead to a migration of sorts. Italians moved in droves to the West Bank in order to avoid persecution. They would take on jobs like grocers or farmers, but organized crime soon became commonplace. Contrary to popular belief, the Mafia actually started in New Orleans, and Sheriff Marrero wasn't having any of it. During this time of organized crime, a bit too organized murders started happening. Six people showed up dead in their homes, but the real kicker is that they were all killed with an ax or a hatchet. The culprit would break into people's homes at night and do the ax slaying and most people believe this to be mafia related. People also believe this to be racially motivated because all of the victims were Italian. We'll go into much more detail on the Axeman in a separate video. On the night of March 9, 1919, two grocery store owners named Charles and Rosie Cortamiglia were attacked by the axe-wielding menace. They survived the attack, but their two-year-old daughter wasn't so lucky. Louis Marrero was a hardline believer that these murders were directly associated with the Mafia. More specifically, he blamed two Italian men, 17-year-old Frank Giordano and the elderly Orlando Giordano. When it came time for the Cortamiglia couple to identify the killer, Charles didn't identify either of the two Italian men, but Rosie was a different story. When she was well enough to be released, Marrero immediately arrested Rosie as a material witness and incarcerated her in the Gretna jail. She was released only after she signed an affidavit implicating her neighbors, so she did it. Rosie accused both Orlando and Frank after threats and intense pressure from Marrero. A court ruled that both Orlando and Frank Giordano were guilty. Orlando would serve life in prison and Frank would be hanged. Now this would leave Charles Cortemiglia to divorce his wife Rosie, who admitted a year later that she falsely accused them. She would then leave the West Bank for fear of Marrero's retaliation. Both of these men would be released after the statement that was made to the newspaper, but Marrero's reputation was tarnished. The whole Axeman ordeal would completely destroy Louis Marrero politically, and in 1920, he was ousted from office. He's now buried in Metairie after dying from heart failure a year later. With the death of Louis Marrero, 
the Mafia would have nearly free reign in the town of Marrero and soon began the legacy of a man named Carlos Marcelo, but that's a video for another day. Pass through the town of Marrero on your next Louisiana road trip and stop by the Barataria Preserve of Jean Lafitte National Historical Park. They have eight miles of boardwalk and absolutely stunning views of quintessential Louisiana landscapes. And we couldn't bring you this information without your support on Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of those who have already contributed and encourage anyone watching this video right now to consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread. For more Louisiana history, horror, folklore, and culture, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Crosby, and this is Louisiana Dread Quick History.